Okay, hi everybody. Bruce with Dabowski Studio. Okay, so today this is what I found. I'm going to be working on a 9x12 toned panel and I've passed this spot many times and today is going to be perfect because I can really get into some textures with the palette knife, that sort of thing. I'm going to try to rough in the base tones of the big bold shapes that I see and then work the wet paint over that to bring out the uh, shapes of the tree trunks, that sort of thing. So everything's kind of uh, emerging out into the light and I think it's going to be pretty fun. Um, I'll get back to the uh, palette. I believe I'm going to be trying out some titanium white, ivory black, ultramarine blue, cad yellow pale, and cad red light. Pretty much my usual. Oh, and I might throw in some umber, maybe burnt or raw. So we'll see how this palette goes, and I want to thank you for joining me. If you're not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe. Check out some more cool content. Everyone else, thanks for watching. And if you're new to the channel, check out my other videos. I think you'll find them interesting. So uh, everybody be sure to check out my Facebook page, Kabowski Studio, follow and like that for me. And uh, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to do my best to try to do this in real time for this. Uh, hopefully I'll have enough storage left. A couple of uh, people have commented in the videos that they'd like to see me mixing the paint together. I unfortunately don't have that capability with my cameras right now, but I'll do my best to explain the colors I'm mixing together. To, to achieve certain passages and uh, there's one element in the scene that'll be moving over into the composition because I like the color that it has in mid-September here. The leaves are starting to change and uh, you could use of course your composition finder to find a composition. I've been eyeballing this for a while so I kind of know what I want to tackle and you don't have to put every little element in there that you see. Pull out the strongest ones and uh, make it a better painting. Uh, we're artists. We're supposed to create the essence of the scene. I mean, yes, you could put in every little detail, but this is a plain air piece, and uh, we're looking for economy here and uh, trying to capture our moment in a fair amount of time. Now, if it was sunny, of course, you'd want to do that, especially because of the changing light patterns. Being a gray, flat day, I could work on this probably all day. I think it might clear off later, but right now, I, I probably have a good three three hours of this that I could use if I wanted to but okay let's get started okay so let's get started and I want to apologize up front if I'm talking and explaining things and it sounds really cohesive then all of a sudden I drift off and I just paint for a few minutes because it's very hard to get into that artistic space and to realize of course you're filming and trying to make a video so I will do my best uh, to start it's a 9 by 12 panel uh, toned with a kind of a umbery color with white and a little bit of cad red over an old painting that wasn't working I uh, sanded it down a little bit and then put this coat of tone now uh, like I said we'll go over the palette again titanium white ivory black raw umber ultramarine blue cad yellow pale cad red light linseed oil for my medium just using a cheap bristle brush to start the block in uh, saving the good brushes for later passages and plus they're a little softer and I can lay paint over the previous layer. This is the is a workhorse. Um, I did buy some uh, Rosemary and Company brushes recently and I'll be using some of those later uh, in the painting but right now I'm just using a cheap I don't even probably a, got it somewhere on sale but let's get started. Like I said I'm just going to try to mass in with raw umber no oil yet but I don't want the paint too too thin either uh, usually I work on a little smaller panel on my number 12 box so I have a little room here on the edges this is the only thing I don't like about some boxes is trying to get in there to the edge but I'll do my best uh, there's a slight hill crest that I'm going to emphasize more as a diagonal and I really want the tree trunks up here there are some tree trunks on the ground this is something that you could do multiple compositions I really like the idea of the cut logs um, and I might emphasize more of the foreground I haven't really let me think on that a minute let me try I'm just gonna because there's so many interesting I think that is what I'm gonna do because that was why I stopped is I really like the idea of this clear cut well, it's not really a clear cut, but they've cut some timber here, and it's really suggestive of 
of uh, interrupting the landscape man-made man's uh, interference uh, mark on the land so to speak so I am going to go for a two-thirds ground and then do the trees up here I'm not really concerned with detail just getting some base tone to see if uh, that will be what I want to do again this is more of an intuitive approach of finding a composition you've seen sometimes in my past videos where I'll do a darker real dark umber blocking and then you can just wipe out the lights even take a uh, paper towel on your finger and you can pull the tone right back out so something to play around with move things around at will this is the stage to be creative and expressive with the brushwork because some of this brushwork once you get the base layer down will continue to you if you pay attention as you continue the painting you may save some of it so something to contemplate not really looking again for too much I see a few darker getting in a little ultramarine into the raw umber now just and I'm not just putting sometimes I might stipple the paint on as an in interesting suggestiveness of leaves in areas where I want some darker passages designing the painting more or less that'll get manipulated and this is the stage when you're gonna know man that thing's gonna pop or not so have some fun with doing this stage because also in if it was sunlight this would be a good opportunity to get your lights and darks nailed down as I've mentioned before in previous videos I'm not really I'm just kind of looking for suggestiveness of maybe some trees back there I can cover that up later or not cover it up I could strike in pull paint away with my brush tip I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up you could also experiment with how you might pull out a tree kind of like that maybe there's another one over here breaking the line a little bit I could pull that out a little more with this little tool here that I've mentioned before I could just take that paint right down to whatever I want to so there's a also be sure not to make your tree trunks all the same width and there's one that's a little wider because I'm gonna have a log over here there's some logs over here I think I'm gonna have it right right here it's a little more straighter I don't want everything to be like a crooked tree because they're not all that way and when you do this with this tool it leaves a uh, ridge of paint and you can manipulate that later with a brush but this is going to give me the visual structure I need right off tilting the tip just kind of getting don't want that too straight it's not too many super straight lines in nature okay now I'm going to work on some diagonal logs here I'm first going to get some bait tone of the what you call it foreground and the overall tone that I'm seeing is a reddish brown so what I'm going to do is get some raw umber cad red light a little bit of the cad yellow pale strike it in there and I'm going to put that in somewhat random places I mean I, I'm looking at what I'm painting and finding out where I want to push pulling some of that
color, letting it meld into background just a bit. And there's like different layers of weeds and grasses here. There's a little bit of just greens now using ultramarine blue and cad yellow pale. Not too worried about super intense paint because don't forget we're going to be overlaying color on this. So let it have some punch. And depending on what you're painting, this is why I suggest carrying priming different panels, different tones, not a whole bunch of tones, maybe three or four tones that you carry in a box in your car that you can switch out when you get to your location because, hey, I'm going to paint, uh, say, an interior wood scene and you want to be able to uh, have a darker tone panel. Like if I do this over again, I would use a deeper toned umber panel to facilitate doing part of the work for me, so to speak, when I put lights and darks. I pretty much would have my value painting instantly, but that's okay. Because as you can see how dark I'm going, the actual tone of the board, which looked dark in the beginning, was actually, actually looks kind of light now. It's all comparison. So, like in some of this, get some umber with that uh, cad red light again. Mixing in a little bit of ultramarine. You see that I'm not I'm trying to avoid black for as long as possible. It is useful for some greens, but I'm trying to keep the painting, because it is a gray day, it could be very easy to get overly gray. And like I said, I will warn you, there could be potentially some time-lapse parts in this. I'll, I'll try to minimize that, but the storage, uh, I don't have much left, so a lot of the real time will be limited. Now I'm going to pull up some of the getting some ultramarine blue. About two-thirds ratio to one-third of uh, cad yellow pale. Getting, pulling up some of that green up in here for the deep forest sort of look. Again, trying to stay away from black as long as I can. I like using black, but I don't want it to be a crutch and I don't want it to be too dead of a color. I think if you have, uh, I'm doing just a little different technique of starting trying with a more chromatic background. More ultramarine blue and a touch of the cad red light to neutralize. And you can see I'm just trying to apply interesting textures because what you can do, especially if you get a really deep layer, let's see if I can get one going here. Ultramarine blue, touch of cad red, um, cad yellow light. Let's say you have this here. You could take your paper towel if you wanted. You could stipple and give this suggestion of leaves. Ooh, a little bit of midges out getting up in my hat here. Back to the ultramarine blue. Now I'm getting some deep dark green I'm going to be working on here. Oh, uh, Cad yellow light to ultramarine blue, some uh, raw umber, and want to get some of that surrounding some edges of these trunks that I've established to set them off. Ultramarine blue just dabbed in straight, pulling Ultramarine blue straight again with just a touch of cad red lights. My brush is still dirty, so it's getting some of that yellow in there for green. Again, setting off some of those tree trunks. It's a nice effect to trying to keep more of the edges of the panel darker so the eye does not go over there easily. I want to try to 
direct the eye a little bit here where I want that focal point. Little umber, little ultramarine blue. Again, trying to be suggestive of leaves, that sort of thing. And I'm seeing a deeper green, little flicks, thicker paint, trying to, as it edges into here, trying to suggest bits and of weeds, that sort of thing. Trying to get too overly thick right now, just a little bit. Trying to really get in here with some, letting the forms emerge. And when I get it like 70%, like, wow, I'm really liking that, is when I'll, I'm now going to jump to the foreground logs, establishing some light, uh, some uh, shadows first. Cad red light, ultramarine blue, raw umber. I'm going to tie everything together. Now, some of these logs, obviously, they're not perfectly... Uh, designed so to speak so I'm going to do a little bit of work and there's also some pieces of uh, the bottom of the tree that the stump that I want to put in strategically I'm going to move them around where I, I want them and like right here even though it's not like that in my scene I'm stealing it and it's going to fit in because the colorations with uh, what's going on right now is I want to have it set off against that dark back there so I'm going to start it here and putting it overly dark right now and I can lighten it up later and when I do that rim lighting on top it's going to pop so we'll do another stump in this edge there trying to make it a little different size make this one a little thicker now get some diagonals in here and yeah you could do a straight line I'm just trying to get a this is going to be the underneath edge of the log and I may not even put them all in so try to suggest and there's some that cross over that I'm going to turn them the other way to Cross over a different way. Lots of debris of sticks. I don't want to get too cluttered. Here's another tree stump. I don't want just two, so we'll do one right here. They're obviously a little lighter in tone, but once I lay the lighter tones over there, I can always add more. Uh, fallen tree limbs and such but I'm trying to really edit a little bit there's a lot to look at here and now we're just going to put suggestions of the some little thicker tones of color umber cad red light a touch of my dirty green that I mixed before just to have some hints of trees a little warmer tones back in the shadows Nothing outlandish. Just wipe off. You see, I've been using this same brush all this time. Now we're going to get a little bit of white, touch of black, get kind of a gray. My brush is still dirty. I haven't really cleaned it, so it's getting a little pinkish looking because of uh, the red I had. Touch of cad yellow pale in there. And Instead of just filling in the tree trunk, kind of thinking of the Impressionists. Just, you know, I don't want to look like a, a birch tree, obviously, but... And see how I've taken that, that when I wiped out earlier, that, that edge of paint, now it's wet and I can soften. It's probably hard to pick up. I'll try to do some detail painting, too. But I'm going to get a little more yellow. 
a little more red, a little more. Very subtle difference, but you can start seeing temperature changes. Now I'm getting that umber and reddish mix that's on my palette from before. A little stronger. Now I'm getting going to go for just straight umber here and there. Kind of angles some strokes. Suggest. See how things are starting to merge out. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a base tone of that in. Uh, over here for to suggest the log trying to stroke I don't still don't have a lot of thick paint I'll do that later as I get to where I want to be I'll essentially basically overpaint everything and thicker paint you could do that as you go along but I'm committing but not overly committing so to speak Gives me room for adjustment where I don't have to work with a lot of wet paint. And gonna do a little more yellow with the cad red light to get a little orangey tone, a little more yellow, a little more white. Try to get those tree trunks a little more red. Trying to angle the chops. I don't want them all the same. Pick up some of that red in the downed timber. And picking up some of that color just in some trunks. I might change that because it's right over this stump. Yeah, let me just break that a bit. I'll deal with that later. So I'm kind of liking this. Now I'm going to switch to a different brush here. My Rosemary and Company Dagger. Really nice brush. This one I'm trying to pause now a little bit and uh, see how I like the composition. I'm liking this leading in. You got a stump here. And now I'm going to put in that tree that I want to move over, a little sapling type tree that uh, has some colors of uh, fall going on. I'm going to over chromatically a little bit make the color so that as it gets intermixed with other colors as the painting progresses it will modulate just enough. Now before when I was using the previous brush I was just using turpentine for all the uh, painting up to this point now I've introduced some linseed oil and now I'm going to put in that little sapling. And I'm going to put it in, because this is like pointing to it, so I might have it overlap this tree a little bit. And I'm trying to pay attention to how the tree is flowing a little bit. I'm not looking to be a naturalist that, you know, it has to be perfect. It's a maple or, you know, I just want the suggestion using the tip of the dagger not going for too many strokes wipe off the excess and it's actually green and a little bit orangey color going to pump up the chromatic effect here in parts and then i'll still probably a little bit later as the painting progresses and i study it put in more texture with a palette knife on top of this. We'll see. Don't forget the paint is still a little damp underneath, obviously. At a certain point, I will rinse the brush a tad. Get a little bit of the 
green going on now. straight yellow because it's going to intermix again trying to follow some form of the tree wipe off excess paint because it's disturbing what's underneath just a hair pick up more thicker paint fleck it here and there with this dagger tip is nice for that again rosemary and company And when I really put in the chromatically strong bits at the very end against all these grays going on, it should sing pretty good. And the oil is creating, I'm not putting a lot of oil, but it's creating a nice like sticking, ugh, uh, Thicker paint, it's sticking good. I like it. All right, let's uh, get some umber mixing into the orange I just mixed for here. Coming over to the log, cutting that shadow line for a half tone. Finding that color elsewhere. Good to do so you have economy of uh, work that you got to do as you're painting. You don't have to just keep picking up paint. Try not to make this too light over here so that it interrupts that highlight, which I'm technically not done with. You can smudge with your finger a bit. Now I'll get some white with a dirty brush and touch into the ultramarine. A hint of a cooler note. Gray day. So, put that right along that top edge. Needs to be a little more chromatically there. Letting the line break a little bit. Okay. okay, unfortunately I have to do a little bit of this in time lapse because I am running low on storage. I had to actually delete an app in my iPad to allow for more. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get more information here. So what I'm going to work on now are some sky holes in the uh, trees here. And um, just remember, like I mentioned before in other videos, when you put your sky holes in, don't make them too light because then they just look like they're pasted on. And they're going to intermix a little bit with paint here and there. Let it dance and mingle a little bit, then pick up more paint and apply more opaque strokes. So all this time I've been using this dagger brush. Uh, I've only been at it since uh, the few changes I made for like uh, five, ten minutes. But uh, another thing you can do rather than keep making something light, like a, I was putting in this little sapling tree here, is to put in what's around it, modify that, and make it darker. Which I'm doing with my dark green mixture of umber, ultramarine blue, some yellow, and cutting in. And, and for this tone of green I used for this little sapling, it was uh, white, uh, yellow and blue with a little bit of white. Uh, going to make it more of a gray green. With a little bit of red in it. To try to get those, uh, that green to pop. Because it will have... 
grayish color around it even though the sapling itself is not super chromatically I can give the illusion that it is I'm trying to again keep the side over there dark so the eye is not hanging out on some light tone right near the edge of the panel so you could obviously spend a lot of time in there in the uh, leaf detail sort of thing if you so choose I'm trying to give more of an impression of the woods get some of my trunk in there the thing with the woods especially on a gray day there's a lot of blending there's a lot of uh, melding of uh, shapes not too many contrasting elements so I'm going to get into some highlights on the logs so then I know how much detail to put in here now we're just going to do a few minutes on the foreground before I have to go back to some time lapse. Check my storage capability here in a moment. Just trying to get some suggestive bits of ground cover. Again, not looking to be a scientist about it, just suggesting stronger color here and there, chromatically, especially uh, when you get up near the dark edge there. Really trying to show the deep woods. <laughs> Get that kind of brownish under color there with some raw umber and cad red light. Tempering it with a little bit of green and little bit of oil just breaking up using the dagger brush still could I use other brushes of course you can but I'm seeing how far I can go with the style of this brush which I'm liking a lot I really like the company too A little umber with the blue mixed into there. Trying to set off some edges of the log. Letting it intermix along the edge, just a hair. Okay, now for some time lapse. I've got a small round brush just working on a few flicks of paint here and there for some dark tones To suggest debris on the littered on the floor of the foot of the uh, near the woods here and as I do this 
I'm pressing in with the brush a little bit, not too much. I'm really trying to pull out some branches on the floor a little bit by setting up the colors around it. Adding flicks of debris for interest here and there. I'm actually going to put in a little bit some yellow, and I think I might have to call it good for now because I feel the sprinkle, the misting getting heavier. So. We'll call this good for now. Take a look at it when I get home. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for this plain air adventure. I'm pretty happy with the piece so far. I like the colors I've, I've achieved on this gray day. Of course, there's still a little more work to be done, but the mist is picking up quite a bit, so I don't know if it's going to start uh, raining or that sort of thing. And I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, be sure to follow me on my Facebook page, Habowski Studio. Follow and like there. And check me out on uh, my website, www.habowskistudio.com. So remember, uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I invite you to subscribe for everyone else. Thanks for watching. And take care. Until next time. Bye.